Well, we're gonna do some milling uh, on a windy Sunday afternoon. So we'll be putting the Granberg mill on the 395 XP, 36 inch bar. She's in a heavy bar for milling and uh, some skip tooth uh, square chisel chain. And yeah, we'll get it set up and take a few shots of making boards. Got to keep it off the uh, roller tip, or it won't roll once you clamp it down. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight, but it ain't a bad idea to make it perfectly straight. The saw's not even warmed up yet, so probably do that while uh, getting ready to, getting set up to record everything down below. Back end's tight and centered. If any of y'all doing that, don't do what I did last time. Neglected to check tension on my bar after sharp sharpening the chain and threw the uh, I didn't actually throw the chain but the bar came loose in the middle of the cut and I broke my chain tensioner thought I had more didn't had to wait a week for them to show up I bought an extra this one would not be the first time I've done that. You'd think I'd have learned the first time. Slow learner. All right, get the saw warming up. Do a little cut.
That's what I get for about a 36 inch bar instead of a 42 and not knocking everything off. Fix it. done some of the milling already you can tell looking at the board it already had a flat top from cuts from months ago we're getting into more of it uh i think i said in the start of the video around a 36 inch it's a 36 inch mill the mill is capable of 36 inches but it won't do that with a 36 inch bar i have a 42 inch to do that that's not the one i'm running turns out with a little few knots and bark on this thing it's still a little tight so started scarfing off a face um do that from time to time uh gonna take a little bit more off down the length it's kind of like maximum board width right now and uh we'll uh get a hopefully a straight run through cut solid without having to stop so we can actually see what, how much time it takes to do a nine foot uh slab off of this thing so let me grab the tape real quick We are nine and a half feet in length. And I think our narrowest point before I scarf it off is right there, but just under 24 inches. So I'm gonna take a little bit more off the side and then uh, get back to some milling. <laughs>
so this chain has about uh, five full length cuts on for this six one. It kind of be close to about the sharpening point on this thing, but uh, still cutting all right. Don't know exactly how much it'll affect speed. I don't notice a huge difference till all of a sudden, you know, you notice it and you're like, shoot, I need to sharpen that thing. So I might quit after this one, change out chains. But uh, anyway, hopefully this is one clean cut. We'll see how long it takes to go nine and a half feet down this board. That is 24 inches wide, just under 24 inches. should have I definitely should have either changed out the chain or filed it before taking that cut it still wasn't awful but uh, it's nice to be more efficient you know 
get stuff done. So I don't know how long that one took. I just knew it took longer than I wanted. Um, I should get six two by fours uh, out of this and some sticker scraps for stacking up lumber. Um, so six out of this, however long that took. And uh, yeah, if I can get uh, three of these slabs off one tank of fuel, I'll do the math, figure out roughly how much it cost me. We'll put that in at the end. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, give you some numbers here in a little bit. Bye. So here's the yield from those four slabs. I've got 17 two by fours and two two by tens with the live edge on them still, which will be used for the uh, raised beds in the garden. Adding a couple more of this here. Um, those two by fours, uh, I didn't spend a great deal of time making them perfect this time. It's all didn't fence them all freehand cut, but uh, just with tracing a line. So. Anyway, they could have been better, but like I said, I'm going to be using them for a composting toilet down on the property. So, yep, it's good enough for what it is, and uh, I'll kind of tell you how long it took and uh, what my cost difference from going to homies and buying that stuff is. All right, so I've got some numbers to wrap this video up and be done. Uh, for me to go to town and buy that lumber uh it take it would take me over three hours it's roughly a three hour drive round trip from the store plus i gotta go in get it load the truck whatnot it's gonna be over three hours you know if i'm getting it while i'm on a trip down the mountain for another reason grocery shopping or whatever that's fine but this is to count it as a specific trip just to see how much it would cost so that lumber right there today's rate would cost me 180 dollars at home depot a few pennies less $180 roughly. It's also cost me about $40 in fuel round trip. So I'm at $220 a day to pick that up plus more than three hours of my time. When all was said and done with the milling, the setup, the cleanup, getting everything ripped, uh, chain sharpened everything away, just under three hours. Not my much, but under three. So I spent less time than I would have going to get them. And I spent about two and a half dollars on bar oil and fuel for the saw so is it worth it for me absolutely 100 percent worth it um your situation where you're living and whatnot may not be worth it uh if you you know need certified spec lumber i don't need that for what i'm doing composting toilet and the treehouse don't need it um if you uh don't uh, have a, a saw that's the right size for milling. If you're using a smaller saw, it just takes too long and doubles the time. Again, it may not be worth it for you. But for me, my situation, this was a good choice. Um, that's why I do it. Anyway, just thought I'd share that info with you. Hope you guys are all doing well. All right, folks, take care. We'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, and it's really, really fun for me. I enjoy it. I get to play with my saws and play outside and make boards. What's not to love about that? All right, bye.